Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce, and today we're going to be talking about the Send to Unreal add-on from Epic Games. This was just released this morning at the Unreal, Unreal Fest 2020, and uh, there's a lot of steps to get it uh, installed just right. There's a bunch of, you got to do this, you got to sign up for that, you got to make sure this, that, and the other. So I'm going to do a whole other video that explains how to install it. Um, and that, but again, I'm going to have that in a separate video. This video is going to be all about talking about what the, what it is, how to use it in general, and more of like an intro to it. So I'm going to Tarantino this tutorial, uh, and going to show you what this add-on can do first, and then we'll, uh, do the introduction and we'll, uh, and, and we'll, uh, explore some of the settings. So, uh, so I've got Blender over here on the left and I've got, uh, I've got Unreal over here on the right. So I've got a model here. If you look down here in my content folder, there's nothing here right now. And once everything's all set up, all you have to do is go pipeline, export, send to Unreal, and watch. It's here. See that? Now I can drag this into my scene, and you can see it brought in the model. It brought in, and, 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 and one of the main things is it brought in the model at the right scale. If you've worked with Blender and Unreal, you know uh, Blender is typically in meters, uh, Unreal is in centimeters, and so a lot of times you get scale issues right off the bat. And uh, but this just works. So let's take this a little bit further. So now what else? What else can we do? So we can apply uh, modifiers. So let's add this decimate modifier. I'm just going to take this down to a low poly model. So that now we have this uh, this beautiful low poly model here. And now what we can do is pipeline, export, send to Unreal. And we've got our low poly model right here in Unreal, already done. Uh, we could go further again. We could uh, we could apply more and more modifiers. Um, pipeline, export, send to Unreal. Those modifiers get here. We don't have to apply them and send them over. We don't have to worry about scale or any of that stuff. So this is uh, this is huge. This is so helpful uh, to get into here. And uh, we, we'll explore some of the settings and all that stuff here in a little bit. But I just wanted to show you some of the some of what you can do uh, before before we went further. So uh, the Send to Unreal add-on from Epic Games, I think, is a huge step forward uh, for the industry as a whole. I think I think it's a big day for Blender. It's a big day for Unreal. It's a big day for game developers and 3D mo modelers and independent artists. I think along with uh, Blender releasing a long-term support. Uh, version and this plugin, I think we're at the early stages of seeing studios potentially uh, adopt Blender, like large studios. I'm not talking about small independent studios. We're not large studios. I think it's gonna. It, 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 the pipeline is a big deal, and this is just day one. So there's a lot of stuff they're planning on the roadmap, um, and uh, so so I'm really really excited to see how this all how this all plays out. Um, so let's go ahead and look into some of the settings and what we can do here. Basically what this this add-on is doing is exporting a FBX. That's really all it's doing, but it, it knows the it knows what it needs, it knows where to send it, and what's really cool is it sends it to the opened Unreal project. So you don't have to constantly set up a uh, a special a specific folder for each project that you do you just open unreal and whatever editor is open it's going to send the model there um so that's that's really cool at first i was like confused about what where i should change this and all that sort of stuff um but uh but yeah so let's just look in here so once you have installed you go to add-ons and these are some of the options you have so uh by default this is off so always use Un unreal scene scale so let's talk about that for a minute uh so Unreal is is counts units in centimeters. So uh, one unit is one centimeter. Blender counts in meter. One unit is one meter. So uh, so you have going from the two programs, you'll have models that are uh, uh, you know obviously the scale is way off. Um, so you depending on how you work, you might want to check this uh, on. If you mostly use Unreal and you're you're not really uh, you haven't been using Blender. I would suggest using it this way. I would suggest going uh, and just say always use Unreal Scale Scene Scale. What that'll do, so the next time you, you open Blender under Scene, instead of the unit scale being 1, it'll be 0 0.01, which is centimeters. So then you'll be working in centimeters when you're in Blender. Um, if you're a Blender user uh, and you're familiar with Blender and you're familiar with, if you're more familiar with meters, then what you can do is keep this unchecked and then on export, you can say scale uh, 0 
and that will do basically the same thing. And you don't have to, you just set this settings once and you don't really have to worry about scale again. Uh, by default, it, have it, it has it set up here for, for uh, Unreal. So uh, on the export settings, it has uh, scale, y, uh, negative five Y forward, Z up. Um, but let me go back to paths here, make sure there's nothing here. So you have these tabs here. So you have paths, export. This is a, is a pretty interesting uh, feature here, use object origin. And you can see here it says when this object will center each object at world origin before it's exported to an FBX, then it will move each or object back to its original position when it's in Unreal. Um, so that's a that could be really useful depending on what you're doing and how many uh, how many objects you're exporting. Um, and then uh, let's see, yeah. So we have the, the scale, uh, of course. We have some some of the stuff is basically just straight from the FBX exporter. So you have a lot of the uh, you know uh, apply transform that sort of thing. So then you can also go up here to import, and then this is really interesting too. So on these are import settings from Unreal. So by def these are I believe these are the uh, default settings. So you could say materials, textures, animations. If you create your LODs in Blender. You can do that here. You can you can check that box and uh, and and you can export those LEDs, which is pretty interesting. I use Unreal's LEDs. They they auto generate them and they're they're pretty good. So I could see if you're doing a lot of custom work, if you make your LEDs here, that could be a, a big option. Another great option they have here is Launch FBX Import UI, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, I'll show you that real quick. So so basically, it's you know, when you import uh, UI into Unreal or when you import FBXs into Unreal, uh, you, you know, sometimes you, you get that UI that gives you some options. So if you've already sent it over through pipeline, um, it's not gonna do anything, uh, it's just gonna say this, it'll just re-import, okay? So it, you don't get this message if that, if that option is checked off, but you do get it if you do have launch FBX. But if you add a new, let's just go ahead and add a new, uh, let's just do something weird. This has got to be in this mesh collections that's created for you when you install the plugin or the add-on. Um, so now when I do export send to Unreal, uh, one was re-imported and then I get the uh, the UI for FBX import. So now uh, if you, depending on what you're doing, depending on your complexities and all that stuff, uh, and if you've already created materials, all that stuff, you get this, uh, you, you know, it might be good to have this. You could see if you want to change any of this stuff on import, uh, and then you can choose to import all or import selected or whatever you want to do. Um, for now, it doesn't doesn't really matter. We can just uh, I'm just going to delete this because I don't I don't want it to to see it anymore. And I'll delete it from here too. The other great thing about this add-on is, um, especially when you think of like optimizing assets and that sort of thing. Let's say you bring when you bring this over. Obviously, the material setup and uh, and the shaders for Unity and Blender are very different, and they they operate differently. So uh, let's say you set up you you've imported your your thing into to Blender, and you edit the existing material, or you create your own material. And uh, let's just do this one. That'll be interesting. So let's say you set up your material the way you like it, but now you need to, you wanna go back here and let's just go ahead and apply those, those modifiers because that will be the easiest thing to see. Uh, basically, it won't, it won't affect your, your material. So if you, uh, so let's say we get this guy here and we wanna send him over, uh, it'll keep the, it'll make the changes that you've made to your mesh. So whether you've deleted vertices or, added a you know uh, changed uh, modifiers that sort of thing but it's not going to affect your material which is important because uh, like I said you obviously have to set up your material separately even if you create your material in blender you have to basically reset it up in uh, in unreal it'll bring in the base texture uh, and the base color but it won't bring in metallic uh, it won't bring in uh, roughness that sort of thing so uh, so being able to continually work on your mesh and it not destroy your materials every time you bring it in is a is another huge win for me. <laughs> I, I as you can tell, I'm very excited about this. Let me know what you think. If you want me to to explore some more of the the options, I'm happy to do that. I probably will be doing that anyway. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to post another video explaining how to set it up because it's not very straightforward. Uh, especially if you don't already have a GitHub account, if you haven't already connected your GitHub in Unreal. But again, we'll save that for the next video. Hopefully this was helpful for you and have a great day.